This is your morning in eight minutes. A Jefferson County man is in custody this morning, accused of shooting and killing his wife. Police arrested 52 year old Kenneth Belcher in the parking lot of an elementary school. The Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says they got a call late Wednesday night from Belcher saying he shot his wife. Dispatch tracked his location to the parking lot of Mount Horeb Elementary School where they arrested him. Deputies later found Jennifer Belcher's body at a home on Ingram Road. Investigators believe the shooting started from a domestic incident. Kenneth is charged with first degree murder. This morning we're learning more about a deadly shooting in North Knoxville Tuesday night. Police say they're looking for a black Toyota Camry with light colored rims and damaged the front driver's side. It's also missing a door handle. Investigators tell us Geronimo Gomez was killed in the shooting on Bradshaw Garden Road after a car crash. They believe the driver of the car was involved, but left the scene before police got there. If you know anything, contact Crime Stoppers. And right now, the two children from Tuesday's deadly car crash on East Magnolia Avenue are in critical but stable condition. A motorcyclist stopped and helped save their lives just moments after the crash happened. Take a look at this. You can see two cars speed past this motorcyclist on the left side of your screen. Police say two drivers were drag racing down the road when they ran a red light and crashed into the family's Ford Explorer. David Spurgeon was on his motorcycle when he turned around, went back to the scene and performed CPR on six year old Hadley until first responders got there. Both Hadley and her brother Gage were in the back seat of the Ford during the crash. Both suffered major broken bones and other injuries. KBD says the children's grandfather, Michael Williams, was driving the Ford Explorer and died in the crash. Both Gage and Hadley, ages 11 and 6, were rushed to UT Medical Center where they are still recovering this morning. Right now, four people are facing charges accused of stealing cars from a Knoxville dealership. KPD officers say a man stole several key fobs from the Grayson BMW and a key box from Grayson Subaru. After putting tracking devices on the cars with missing key fobs, police noticed the trackers moving down I-40. Officers were able to find the stolen key fobs and the cars. The four suspects face felony theft charges. Well, Crime Stoppers is looking for two suspects accused of stealing $7,000 worth of perfume and cologne from Ulta in Turkey Creek. Investigators say both suspects walked into the store on December 18th, loaded their shopping baskets with the products, and left the store. A store employee tried to approach both of them, but were told by the suspects to stay away. If you know any of these people, call Crime Stoppers. We're also following a developing story this morning. Governor Bill Lee's office says they will soon be rejecting federal funding that supports some HIV care services. That money comes directly from the CDC. It helps pay for surveillance, testing and prevention services. In a statement, Lee's office says his administration is looking to decrease its reliance on federal funding and assume more independence. Officials did not say where the state would get the money to cover prevention costs or what groups would be impacted. State Democrats are calling the move heartless and irresponsible. Well, right now, the U.S. has reached its debt ceiling limit, forcing the Treasury Department to take steps to avoid defaulting. Now it's up to Congress to raise the debt limit. If there's no deal to raise the amount of money the government can borrow by June, it risks a market plunge, plunge mass layoffs, and a spike in interest rates. The Treasury Department says they are already halting some payments to retirement programs for federal workers to buy Congress some time to work on a deal. We're learning new details about the computer glitch that grounded thousands of flights nationwide last week. The FAA says someone unintentionally deleted computer files in the database that alerts pilots to current conditions and potential safety issues on their route. Officials say it was human error and no cyber attack was reported. Actor Alec Baldwin is facing up to five years in prison for a deadly shooting on a movie set back in 2021. Baldwin was rehearsing a scene for the movie Rust when the gun went off, killing Helena Hutchins and the movie's director was hurt. Baldwin later said he did not pull the trigger, but prosecutors say the forensics from an FBI report indicate otherwise. The person in charge of weapons on the movie set will also be charged with involuntary manslaughter. Charges will officially be filed by the end of the month. And this morning, the music world is remembering legendary singer and songwriter David Crosby. The founding member of the Birds and Crosby, Stills and Nash died Thursday. Crosby was an iconic figure in folk, 
rock music for more than six decades. Crosby continued performing until last May when he announced his retirement. He was 81 years old. WVLG is proud to be your official station of the Vols and We Back Pat Week is off to a great start for the Lady Vols as they beat the Florida Gators last night. The team was wearing special uniforms in honor of the late coach Pat Summit. Teams across the country will be honoring Summit and her foundation for the next week, which aims to bring awareness and support in the fight against Alzheimer's. And getting a look at your first alert traffic right now that volume is light on the roadways. This is I-40 right around Hall of Fame Drive. No complaints as you head out the door around Knoxville, even around East Tennessee. We're not following any incidents slowing you down. Just a heads up that some road work that was scheduled to take place along I-40 right on that bridge over 17th Street this weekend. That's postponed due to the weather, so you're not going to run into any delays with that road work. We'll let you know when it's rescheduled. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. Five minutes to seven now on your Friday morning with this cloud cover can kind of drop it in, bringing in a couple of light mountaintop snow showers, bringing in the colder air that basically settles in today into tonight. That leaves us right now at 36 Knoxville, but then 39 Morristown and La Follette, 40 in Oak Ridge to 34 Crossville. Some ups and downs as these clouds kind of dip into parts of our area, acting like a patchy blanket with wind chills a factor. Now it is feeling like 30 Knoxville, wind chills 32 Sneedville, 24 though is what it feels like Clark Range. So we got to dress for those cold winds now and throughout the day today. We'll at least see more sunshine though for your afternoon. These clouds are retreat back basically. That'll put us at 44 at noon with a high today of 48, but those winds kicking up. So in the feels like forecast where you live, this is what we got to dress for today. Get those warm layers out. It's going to feel like 42 in Knoxville this afternoon. Zoomed in, find your county, 45 Loudoun. It'll feel like 35 in Clark Range to Oneida. Wind chills around 37 Williamsburg and Tazewell and Feeling like around 41 Dandridge to 40 in Gatlinburg. But that's just to start the weekend. We're going to be tracking some more rain to end the weekend and at times next week coming up on the CW. I know it's cold, but at least it's calm. I'll take that for this morning. That is still a win. Yeah, definitely. All right, Heather, thanks. We're headed on over to WBXX, the CW Knoxville. We hope to see you there.